Yama, I'm Jack, and this is Newsbreak. The battle to get rid of the deadly bee parasite, Varroa mite, has come to an end. From now on, the government says they'll try to manage the pest instead. But what does that mean for the bees? Well, here's Joe to explain. 15 months, $132 million and 30,000 euthanised beehives later. The Varroa mite fight is taking a drastic turn. Now is the time to abandon minimisation by eradication and instead move to minimisation of harm through management. See, these little mites, also called Varroa destructors, have been causing havoc in Aussie beehives since they were first found in the port of Newcastle in June last year. They latch onto honeybees and make them sick. And until last year, Australia was the only continent in the world to be Varroa mite free. After destroying tens of thousands of hives trying to get rid of the mites, the government and industry experts have now decided it's a losing battle. We had no other choice than to accept that Varroa had beaten us, Varroa 1, Beekeeper 0. Some are happy with the new management decision, but for beekeepers who've already lost their bees, it's tough. I definitely feel that it could have happened earlier. The ones that have only been uh, euthanized within the last couple of weeks, that, that's going to be a very hard call. Now it's up to beekeepers to control the pest themselves with special chemicals, and hive movements will still be monitored. Some reckon bee numbers will fall, and it'll bring extra costs to beekeepers, food producers and customers in the long run. But all we can do is accept that this pest is here to stay. Archaeologists have made a really exciting discovery in Africa. Some are really old logs. They're not just any logs. They say these pieces of wood were shaped by human carpenters. And they're nearly half a million years old which means people were building stuff with wood way earlier than anyone thought. It's what I call a disruptive discovery, and it, it suggests to me that early hominins were actually capable of doing things which we, we would marvel at if we were doing it ourselves. Oh, have you seen this face before? It's Bob Ross. He was a famous TV star and painter, and now one of his earliest paintings is expected to sell for more than nine million US dollars. Here's Justina. Hello, I'm Bob Ross, and I'd like to welcome you Famous for his paintings, perm, and softly spoken voice. Today we'd make a scene that's very happy. Bob Ross hosted what some say is the most popular painting show in history. Hi, welcome back. I've been in a few minutes here with my friend. This is Mr. J. And to this day, still makes quite the impression. With more than 5 million YouTube subscribers, countless memes, a blockbuster movie. Let's just take it all in. And now his painting, A Walk in the Woods, which was whipped up in his very first episode, is being sold for 9.85 million US dollars. What this piece represents is the people's artist. It's not some highbrow gallery telling you that Bob Ross is great. This is the masses, the population in the world that are saying Bob Ross is great. Yep, he showed the world that by following his simple techniques, painting was something everyone could do. Anything that you're willing to practice, you can do. And every art lesson... OK, let's just put a happy little mountain, something about like that. ...was also a life lesson. We don't, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Oh, hold on to your wigs, because these next stories are brought to you by the power of wind. Oh, I'm not wearing a wig. <laughs> <laughs> First up to some rather impressive stunts that were pulled off at the Megaloot Challenge in the Netherlands, where kiteboarders from across the globe brave high wind speeds to pull off a 360 degree loop. To hold the comp, the wind and weather conditions must be just right, which means contestants were only given 36 hours notice to get to the beach to take part. This year, Italy's Andrea Principi was crowned Mega Loop champion. No, it's not true. Really, I won. You won! Speaking of death-defying windy sports, the world's top windsuit flyers have shown off their skills at the World Championships in China. It involved jumping from a 1,400-metre cliff and collecting targets on the way down. Whew. And finally, a company in Tasmania has been shortlisted for the prestigious Earthshot Prize. Seaforest has used red seaweed to make a feed supplement for sheep and cattle, which helps cut down on methane when they, uh, pass wind. Well, that's all we've got, but we'll be back tomorrow with more!